In the shadows of Lincoln City, where power is feared and freedom is a dream, Connor Reed, a man armed with electrifying secrets, stands on the brink of an abyss. As he fights to save his mother's life, he's drawn into a perilous web where every ally could be an enemy in disguise, in a city that hunts the gifted, where the next spark could be the last. Enhanced individuals became a vital component of the labor force in the 20th century. The government has summoned those with unique talents to catalog their abilities and contribute to constructing Lincoln City. However, the need for such workers has diminished since the Second Industrial Revolution, because companies now favor automated mechanisms. This scarcity of roles for these gifted citizens has led them towards various illicit activities. A nefarious group known as the Trust has been siphoning the spinal fluid from these individuals to manufacture a potent narcotic named Psyche. As issues stemming from this substance persist, calls for new legislation to limit superpower usage have emerged. Law enforcement has deployed drones and mechanized enforcers, dubbed Guardians, to surveil and detain unlicensed superpowered beings. A Tier 5 electrician, Connor Reed, seeks to support himself by taking temporary manual jobs at construction sites while searching for stable employment. Following an interview, he proceeds directly to a work site to assess if the supervisor requires his electrical expertise. The supervisor consents to a half-day trial, but law officers soon arrive to verify no powers are being exploited. They command the crew to gaze upwards, allowing the drone to ascertain if any possess abilities. The officers instruct those with powers to vacate the premises and secure a permit to continue employment. During the probe, it's discovered that a worker is wanted by the law. As the arrest unfolds, the individual unleashes flames from his palms in an escape attempt. Guardians descend from above and neutralize him fatally. In another part of Lincoln City, a narcotics operation targets a powered individual's residence. A guardian breaches the entrance, but is swiftly incapacitated when the occupant, a Class IV strongman, propels a disc at it, striking its cervical region. The suspect attempts an egress via the window, but Officer Park intervenes, threatening lethal force. A search reveals a chamber where superhumans are drained of their spinal fluid. Authorities also seize numerous packets of psych tied to a kingpin, Marcus Sutcliffe. Connor visits his mother at the supermarket, where she faces reprimand from her superior Dave for inadvertently solidifying sauce and causing a spill. Mary Reed, afflicted with cryokinesis and struggling with her condition due to a neoplasm, watches as Connor bristles at Dave's harsh reproof towards her. Despite the confrontation and Connor's near use of his powers, the unyielding manager expels them from the establishment. En route home, Connor implores Mary to commence chemotherapy, but she reveals the financial impossibility. The next day, as Connor anticipates informal work on a curb, he spots a Lincoln power truck. His associate, Travis, cautions against entanglement with Sutcliffe's associates. The vehicle near and the operator seeks an electrician of at least class two. Connor vacillates but ultimately approaches, demanding dollar two hundred in advance. The driver, Garrett, consents and ushers him aboard. Inside, a silent strongman named Freddy communicates via gestures, instructing Connor to don protective gear. Garrett escorts Connor to a facility to deactivate an electrified barrier. Attempting to sever the wires with cutters, Connor recoils from a shock, opting instead to overload the system. A fire controller named Maddie liquefies the padlock, granting the van access to the facility. As they transfer chemical drums onto their vehicle, a security officer officer approaches, attempting to summon reinforcements. Garrett employs his mind-moving abilities to confiscate the officer's communicator, prompting the guard to capitulate and profess ignorance. Departing the premises, law enforcement is alerted to a trespass at Jones Chemical. Patrol units are instructed to be vigilant for a crimson transport van. Connor demands compensation from Garrett and requests release, but Garrett insists the task is incomplete. Garrett positions the automobile beneath an overpass, directing his team to remove the emblem and the crimson tarp concealing the van's true alabaster hue. The aerial drone identifies their van, yet often Officers dismiss it due to a mismatch in color, thus redirecting their search. Garrett steers the van to a storage area, soliciting Rhino's guidance to Sutcliffe, a mind reader. Rhino escorts them through a concealed route to Sutcliffe's establishment. Within, Wesley Cumbo, a trust envoy, reproaches Sutcliffe for his delinquent payments. Sutcliffe's attempt at justification is cut short as Cumbo commands him to probe the thoughts of his colleague Copperhead, revealing homicidal intentions. Cumbo grants Sutcliffe a week to settle his debt. Post Cumbo's departure, Garrett acquaints Connor with Sutcliffe. Sutcliffe probes Connor's psyche, deducing his potential utility. He instructs Nia to acquaint Connor with the surroundings. Nia proposes a beverage, but Connor declines, citing transients. Sutcliffe informs Garrett of his inability to finance the chemicals, prioritizing Cumbo's payment to avert retribution. Sutcliffe inquires about Connor's capabilities, pondering his suitability for another assignment. Garrett acknowledges Connor's prowess, but notes the necessity for further training. Sutcliffe urges Garrett to expedite Connor's readiness for a lucrative venture. Garrett dispenses Connor, rewarding him with an additional dollar three hundred and instructing him to reconvene the following day for further earnings. Garrett imparts wisdom on on talent utilization before departing. At his residence, Mary recounts her attempt to reclaim her supermarket position. Connor denounces her supervisor's demeanor, but Mary highlights the financial imperative. Back at the club, Nia solicits Sutcliffe, indicating her depletion of psych. Sutcliffe presents a file of the substance, contingent on her performing a task. On the thoroughfare, officers Park and Davis scrutinize the Jones chemical heist. Park deduces the theft of 200 gallons of chemicals for diluting Sutcliffe's psych with hydro. Davis
Service informs Park of the electrical sabotage and pyrotechnic breach. Park commissions Davis to compile a roster of electrics with such capacity. The subsequent day, Travis counsels Connor on the prudence of collaborating with Sutcliffe's affiliates. Shortly, the previous job's foreman seeks two electrics, yet Connor opts for Garrett's proposition. Garrett questions Connor's resolve, prompting Connor to disclose his mother's medical fiscal needs. Garrett tests Connor's skill by tasking him with neutralizing a diner's car alarm. Garrett triggers the alarm, and amidst the clamor, Connor inquires about his remuneration for participating in their next burglary. Garrett confirms a $25,000 payout, and upon deactivating the alarm, learns of Connor's father's fate, a fellow electric, fatally wounded during a heist. He deduced that his mother nurtured him devoid of powers to prevent a fate akin to his father's. Garrett commenced Connor's tutelage by tasking him to illuminate a bulb, which resulted in a burnt coil initially. Amidst heist preparations, Connor undertook various subordinate roles for Garrett, such as extorting payments from narcotics peddlers. Eventually, Connor mastered the art of lighting a bulb without destruction. Garrett further assessed Connor's resilience by confronting him with a defiant electric debtor. The adversary unleashed an electrical assault on Connor to negligible effect. Connor retaliated, incapacitating the man with a potent electrical discharge to the torso. Garrett honed Connor's abilities, counseling him to adopt a merciless stance towards their affiliates. One evening, Connor confronted Dave at the grocery, issuing threats. Back home, he falsely assured his mother of securing stable employment. Meanwhile, officers Park and Davis surveilled Connor, discerning his lack of steady work and financial duress due to his mother's health expenses. Park instructed Davis to flag Connor as a person of interest. Subsequently, Connor and Garrett scouted a bank, scrutinizing security protocols and the vault's whereabouts. Connor asserted the impossibility of breaching the vault sans triggering the alarm. Garrett calculated a narrow window of seven minutes, dictating a five-minute escape plan. At the grocery, Mary found herself perplexed by Dave's uncharacteristically amiable conduct, which included task avoidance. That night, the crew infiltrated the bank, firearms in hand. Connor promptly sabotaged the power to the vault, thwarting remote lockdown. Amidst the ensuing alarm, they coerced a staff member to manually unlock the vault. While Garrett menaced her during the combination entry, Connor endeavored to soothe her. Upon the vault's opening, Garrett's ire erupted, discovering the monetary contents largely depleted earlier that day. Opting to seize the remnants, the gang vacated the premises, only to be greeted by awaiting drones. Connor unleashed an electrical onslaught, downing the drones in their Guardian cargo. They returned to Sutcliffe's den to report the meager $50,000 haul. As Garrett and Sutcliffe quarreled over trust dues, Copperhead launched an attack on Sutcliffe. Rhino interposed, his bulletproof form shielding against the gunfire, prompting Copperhead to redirect her aim at Nia. Connor disarmed her, provoking a knife-wielding pursuit. Rhino neutralized her with gunfire, ensuring her demise with additional shots. Later, Connor stumbled upon Nia, indulging in psych. She confided the recurrent threats on her life, attributing the latest to her healing prowess. Nia then remedied Connor's arm wound. Upon inquiry, Nia confessed her indebtedness to Sutcliffe for her healing services. At home, Mary confronted Connor about concealed earnings, skeptical of his overtime claim. Her suspicions were confirmed upon contacting his prospective employer, who denied any association. As Connor justified his illicit endeavors, Mary succumbed to her powers, collapsing. At the hospital, the prognosis was dire. Immediate surgery was imperative to alleviate the tumor's cranial pressure. Confronted with the exorbitant surgical fees, Connor faced the grim reality of his financial incapacity. Outside the hospital, Park and Davis linger, beckoning Connor to the precinct. Park probes about the heists, but Connor feigns ignorance. They caution him against Sutcliffe, Lincoln City's notorious felon, and boast of an impending drug incineration. Park dangles aid for Connor's sick mother in exchange for intel. Davis, however, mocks Connor's heritage. Igniting his ire, Connor retorts, urging a review of the security tapes. Park, sensing insufficient proof, releases him, while Davis sinisterly suggests framing Connor, citing the peril of the powered. Disgusted, Park rejects the ploy. Freed, Connor encounters Garrett, assuring his silence to the police. At Sutcliffe's, Connor's mind betrays no treachery. He pitches a heist on the police's psych convoy. In exchange for success, Connor bargains for Naya's release to heal his mother. Sutcliffe, discerning Connor's motive, consents. Naya, aggrieved, exits. Garrett negotiates his own terms, seeking partnership with Sutcliffe, who concedes, acknowledging Garrett's merits. As they strategize, Connor stipulates no harm to law enforcement. He reassures Nia of her freedom post-healing, but she rebukes him, feeling valued only for her abilities. On heist day, the crew erects roadblocks, eyeing the armored van. Drones shadow the van until a no-fly zone mandates their withdrawal. The van's detour leads to Garrett's obstruction with a trash truck. Garrett's stalling enables Connor's charged assault on the van, disabling the guardians. Garrett's telekinesis maintains their incapacitation. Post no-fly zone, the guards, disoriented by tear gas, capitulate. Maddie seizes the psych, passing it to Rhino. The guards plead for mercy, but Rhino's men open fire. In a shocking turn, Rhino betrays Maddie with a shot to the back. Garrett, protective of Freddy, deflects the onslaught with his powers. The narrative leaves us pondering the fate of the characters amidst chaos and betrayal. In the aftermath of a chaotic heist, Connor faces the consequences of his actions. 
actions. Rhino's departure leaves Garrett and his crew to fend for themselves against the Guardians. Despite their efforts, Freddy is wounded, and the situation at Sutcliffe's bar grows tense as Naya is pressured with a vial of psych and the revelation of her father's death. Connor's visit to his mother in the hospital is heart-wrenching as she pleads with him to abandon his dangerous path. Meanwhile, Park's personal life intersects with his professional one when his daughter Lena reveals her fears about her powers. This emotional moment is interrupted by a message from Connor, leading to a diner meeting where Connor offers to aid the police in capturing Sutcliffe. The narrative escalates as Sutcliffe, Nia, and Rhino find themselves in a dire confrontation with Garrett and the police. In a dramatic turn, Garrett and Connor manage to overpower Rhino, and Nia makes a critical decision regarding Sutcliffe's fate. The story culminates with Connor's moral dilemma as he weighs Nia's safety against his mother's life, ultimately leading to a poignant conclusion at the hospital. He informs her that the truck is fully fueled to transport her to any desired destination. Shortly following the disastrous robbery, legislators have suggested a complete prohibition on the utilization of abilities in Lincoln City. Park and Davis are honored with a commendation for their valor in chasing down felons in the metropolis. Garrett promptly convenes with Cumbo, remunerating him with double the sum that Sutcliffe was indebted to them. Connor makes a stop at his mother's tombstone, expressing that he will be unable to pay respects for some time. Naya makes a trip to see her father behind bars, beaming at him as she anticipates starting anew after her release from Sutcliffe's control. This is it for today. I will reconnect with you with another story like this. Until then, this is your host for Movie, Recap Vision, signing off. Don't forget to subscribe and enable notifications to catch more videos like this. Thank you for watching.